Hello and welcome. My name is Vishwanath M. In this video, let us try to learn and understand the program of Tower of Hanoi in C language. If following the video syllabus, this is program number 5B. Before we understand the program, let us have a brief introduction of this very interesting mathematical puzzle uh, invented by Edward Lucas. A very interesting legend or a story goes with this mathematical puzzle. This legend has said to be occurred in this place called Hanoi in Vietnam, hence the name Tower of Hanoi. Sometimes this puzzle is also referred to as Tower of Brahma, which has which was said to be occurred in a place called Banaras, which is in India. Anyway, uh, regardless of the name, the uh, rules and the, uh, the puzzle itself remains the same. So, uh, assuming that this place has occurred either in Hanoi or in Banaras, the, the puzzle goes like this. In the temple, uh, there were said to be three towers, as you can see here, and the assignment of, for the priests in the temple was that they were supposed or they are uh, assigned to, to transfer 64 disks from source to destination or from one tower to another tower. This was a simple assignment. But that assignment came with a set of rules, uh, which is the rules of the problem. So there are three, three rules. First being, only one disk can be moved at a time. So even if there were to be 64 uh, disks here, the first rule says, only one disk can be moved at a time. The second uh, condition says that a disk can be moved only if it is the uppermost disk on the stack. So we are not supposed to move any or uh, any disk other than the topmost disk in the stack. The third condition says no disk may be placed on top of a smaller disk. For example, if we if we have a smaller disk here, uh, or this being the smallest disk in this case, we are not allowed to place a disk on top of a smaller disk. Even if I try to place it here, it is not allowed. So this is the third and uh, another important rule in the assignment. So the legend goes on to say that if the priests were able to uh, transfer all the four, all the 64 disks from the source to destination, the world would end. Now, we already have the logic to solve the program a problem. We also have uh, so many programs which give the procedure or the steps to solve the pro uh, to solve the problem. Uh, does that mean that uh, that that problem is so simply solvable or simply? Uh, doable? Definitely not. Because uh, with 64 uh, disks in the tower, uh, even in the most efficient way, uh, the number of moves to transfer 64 disks from one tower to another is this huge number, which is even difficult to read. If the priests were to follow the algorithm and uh, even at most efficient speed of one move per second, had to transfer all the 64 disks from one to the other, it would require close to about 585 billion years. Since the legend says if they were supposed, if they were uh, successful in transferring 64 disks from one to other, the world would end. And since the time required to carry out that assignment is 585 billion years, we are safe. Anyway, uh, let, that was the introduction for the problem or the background. And now let us dive into the program itself. This simple C program. Uh, Includes two header files, hcdio and hcdlib.h. This uh, this method of solving the problem, or uh, this uh, the logic involved in solving this tower of Hanai problem, involves the use of recursion. Recursion is a technique of uh, calling a function by itself. In any recursive function, uh, required prerequisite is that a recursive function has to have a terminating condition, which means uh, the execution of the recursive function stops when the terminating condition is satisfied. That was the introduction for recursion. Now let us understand the program itself. There are two functions, pvoh and void main. Since void main is the place where execution starts, let us understand from here. In the, ma in the main function, we are creating a variable called n, which is an integer, and n here represents the number of disks. Since we execute the program, we allow the user to enter the number of disks and then lay out the procedure to solve the tower of Hanoi problem with those many number of disks. 
where it uh, accepting the input uh, n, which, is hap which happens to be an integer here. And once we have the input, we are calling the function POH or Tower of Hanoi in this case. Uh, since POH is called by the main function here, uh, the execution is uh, the uh, control of execution comes here, which is the uh, uh, which is where the function is. And the Tower of Hanoi is called with a set of a set of parameters. There are four parameters. The first one being n. In the first time when the uh, POH is called from the main function, n represents the number of disks, which happens to be four in this case. And following the number n we have three characters A, B and C, A representing source, this is A or the source, B representing destination, so the second tower here is B and this is the destination and the third tower is C which is the auxiliary node or the extra uh, rod or the extra tower. So th these were the parameters that, that are initially passed from the main function to the uh, QOH function. And once we have uh, entered the execution of POH, n here represents the uh, the disk number. Uh, for example, if there were to be four disks here, this would be disk number one, this would be disk number two, this would be disk number three, and four. So n here is represents the, num the disk number rather than the number of disks. Anyway, so uh, we have already understood the uh, function prototype or the parameters in the function. This is a terminating condition. As I mentioned, any recursive function has to have a recursive function, has to have a terminating condition. In this case, if n is equals to equals to 1, uh, that which means to say if the number of disks is just 1, then we just have to move that disk from source to destination and end the execution of POH, or end the execution of POH in that particular recursive call, so to say. And this is the terminating condition. Which makes sense because if we have the tower of Hanoi problem with only one disk, it requires only one move, uh, just transferring the disk from source to destination, and the problem will be done thusly. But that is the terminating condition. Now, to solve the tower of Hanoi problem, this is the algorithm, or this is the logic, uh, which is the most efficient way to solve, which gives the least number of moves to make the uh, transfer or to make the shift in the lowest number of moves possible. So there are three steps in the algorithm. The first step says shift n minus one disks from source to auxiliary using destination. Meaning this is the source, this is the destination, and this is the auxiliary uh, tower. So the algorithm says first we will have to transfer n minus one disks from source to auxiliary using destination. So that is the first step in the algorithm. And how do we implement that? Uh, we call the POH function recursively here. Uh, uh, with the first parameter to be n minus 1, that which is what the algorithm says. And now we are interested to transfer from source to auxiliary. So, source is taking the position of source, and in the place of destination, that means when the function is called, we are actually interested in transferring n minus 1 disk from source to auxiliary, which is actually the destination here. And uh, at that time, the destination node, or the third node uh, in the initial uh, convention, the uh, destination node will be acting as an auxiliary node. Uh, recursive functions look very simple as uh, the length of the programs normally tend to be smaller, but recursive functions uh, sometimes or most more often than not tend to get complex or subtle when trying to understand clearly. So uh, let us understand that again. POH being a recursive function is called uh, and when it is called in the function recursively, we are we are playing around with the parameter list. Uh, following the algorithm. So we are interested to transfer n minus 1 disks from source to auxiliary using destination. So this is the first step in the algorithm. Once we have transferred n minus 1 disks, the second step in the algorithm says shift the last disk from source to destination. Uh, and we have implemented that here. So we uh, move the disk from source to destination. And that would uh, essentially solve the second step in the algorithm. Now. Uh, assuming that we have already transferred n minus 1 disks to the auxiliary and the last disk to the destination, now the only uh, the only objective is to transfer n minus 1 disks which are in the auxiliary tower to the destination tower because that is where it is supposed to be and at that time we could use the source as the auxiliary tower. So 
we are calling the function POH again recursively n minus 1 uh, which is what the number of disks in the auxiliary node is so from auxiliary we are transferring n minus 1 disks from auxiliary to destination and at that time we, we can use source as the auxiliary so from uh, in order to make it simpler for understanding uh, we are uh, first we will be interested to transfer n minus 1 disk from source which happens to be A and then uh, all the n minus 1 disks would come here and then we would transfer the last disk to the uh, auxiliary uh, to, the, to the destination tower which happens to be in this case and after we have gotten the last disk here and n minus 1 disks here we will have to transfer these disks from auxiliary to destination which we will, which we will what uh, which is what we will see when we execute the program and carry out the demo so we have understood the program and uh, the algorithm for the program is here let us now execute the program and uh, finally uh, carry out a demo to make the understanding much more interesting and efficient so in order to execute uh, our C program we will have to uh, compile the program using gpc and uh, following the program name if we see no errors uh, this is a familiar uh, view we will have, have the cursor blinking for the next command to be entered and once the program is compiled we could execute the program using this uh, command dot slash a dot out and once the execution starts uh, from the main function uh, we will uh, have the control waiting for us to enter the number of disks since we have four disks in this demo here let us enter four and once once we click enter that would uh, essentially uh, have the control here poh and poh would call the recursive function it would run recursively again and again executing the steps as and when uh, as and when the condition satisfies and we will have the set of steps to transfer the disks from source to destination let us see the output so we have a set of steps and uh, uh, in order to make this uh, much more interesting let us carry out the uh, the implementation itself or let us carry out the procedure to solve the tower of an eye problem uh, some of the conventions we can use now, uh, this will be this number one this will be this number two this will be three and four as i already pointed out this would be so uh, a this would be b and this would be c and uh, uh, in our, our uh, just to make things clear again A, B and C, source, destination and auxiliary Now let us follow the output Move the disk 1 from A to C A to C 2 from A to B 2 from A to B Move disk 1 from C to B C to B Move disk 3 from A to C This is disk number 3 And we are interested in transferring from A to C the next step in the output says move the disk 1 from B to A this is B, this is A, so B to A move the disk 2 from B to C B to C move the disk 1 from A to C from A to C now if you observe this state this is essentially what the first step in the algorithm is indicating shift n minus 1 disk from source to auxiliary so this was source this was destination and this was auxiliary so we have transferred n minus 1 disk n being 4 here we have transferred 3 disk that is n minus 1 disk from source to auxiliary so we have carried out the first step in the algorithm the next step says shift the last disk from source to destination this is the uh, last disk this being the source this being the destination we can again uh, verify from the output here it says move this 4 from A to B so this 4 from A to B now the second step is uh, in the algorithm is solved and the third step goes like this shift n minus 1 disks from auxiliary to destination so this being the auxiliary this being the destination uh, the, uh, the function carries out itself and gives the output let us follow the output and uh, see if we have got the correct output move disk 1 from C to B C to B move disk 2 from C to A C to A move disk 1 from B to A B to A 
3 from C to B, 3 from C to B, move disk 1 from A to C, A to C, move disk 2 from A to B, this is disk number 2 and we are moving it from A to B, the last step in the output says move disk 1 from C to B. So, this was the source, this was the destination, this was the auxiliary and hence we have solved the problem by transferring n disks from source to the destination and we have used these many number of steps. The, uh, the formula to remember the number of steps is 2 power n minus 1. So, n being 4 here, uh, 2 power 4 is 16 and 16 minus 1 is 15. So, we have, uh, we have solved the problem with the least number of steps which happens to be 15 in this case. So, the output has led us or output has guided us on how to solve the prob uh, problem or the tower of an eye problem for the uh, n value to be equal to 4. And uh, interested ones could you know, execute the program for larger number of disks uh, and uh, see how, uh, how difficult it actually is to, ca the, to even follow the steps and execute the program and hence the time required. And if uh, uh, most most website doesn't allow us to enter a value of 64 and even if you do that uh, no one would ever be able to uh, successfully complete the transfer even in its entire lifetime and this would uh, this has brought us to the end of this video where we have understood uh, the tower of hanoi problem the story behind it the uh, the technique of recursion and this entire program of solving tower of hanoi using c thank you